Boy, oh boy, oh boy. Now we've got to talk about this. All right, let me get to the easy part. Let me talk about the match first. Um, again, I've always said that Roman Reigns and Kevin Owens have had great chemistry in the ring. They've never had a bad matchup, at least not in my view. Um, I know people are going to, you know, question the 2017 Royal Rumble, um, you know, because not a lot of people like Roman Reigns back then. But I, I honestly think that shouldn't take away from that match. But that's, you know, neither here nor there anymore because that's history. 2021 Royal Rumble was their second match out of this trilogy at this pay-per-view at this premium live event. And I love that match personally. Unfortunately, the finish got screwed and that was that. But personally, I love that last man standing match. Phenomenal. And uh, I rewatch it if I can every time, every chance I get. Maybe I'm doing something and I hit that on YouTube. Bam. Love watching that match. This match <coughs> was good. It was really good. I don't know if it was as good as uh, uh, the last man standing one, you know, aside from, you know, screwy finish. But I really enjoyed this one because the buildup, like I said, it, like uh, when I was saying with Bianca Belair and Alexa Bliss, the buildup was a lot better than the match. I mean, it was just, it wasn't even close. With this, it was about equal. It was a good buildup and it was a good match. So it delivered on what it was supposed to. You guys know I'm a huge Roman Reigns fan, you know, to the death uh, at this point. Um... It was a great match. I loved the fact that Kevin Owens took so much punishment. I mean, that man took like, I don't know, two to three spears, two Superman punches. He got his head slammed on the stairs like twice. You know what I'm saying? So it was like, he took a massive amount of damage. And he still kept getting up. He still kept fighting. And like I said, I've always liked uh, and respected Kevin Owens' work. And it did not disappoint tonight. But obviously, that's not the big story here. The match ain't the big story of the night. The big story is what happened after the match. We all saw it. Roman Reigns finally snapped. He ordered Sami Zayn, the Usos, and Solo Sokoa to beat down Kevin Owens for about five minutes. It was a heinous and vicious attack. Okay? And I'm, and I'm not being dramatic here. This is what it was. This is what it was. This is the kind of thing that you'd see back in the Attitude Era. And definitely in the Ruthless Aggression Era. I mean, it was dark. They handcuffed him to the ropes. They were beating the living you-know-what out of him. I mean, it was ridiculous. It was a heinous attack. And everybody was cool with it. Everybody was cool with it. Super kicks from the Usos. Samoan Spike from Solo Sokoa. Roman Reigns got his punches in. And then he hands... Well, he gets the chair himself. And then he hands Sami Zayn the chair. Because Sami Zayn made the mistake of opening his mouth. And saying that the tribal chief should not do this. He shouldn't commit this act because this is below him. This is below the tribal chief. He doesn't need to take a chair to Kevin Owens' head when the man's already unconscious. I mean, Solo Sokoa did most of the damage. I mean, good grief. And he's like, and Roman's like, yeah, you're right. I shouldn't do it. You should do it. And he hands the chair to Sami Zayn, and we all know where this is going. Either he hits Kevin with the chair, which that was never in the cards for this man since the beginning. I knew it. I saw it. I called it. He, gave, he gives Sami Zayn the chair. Sami Zayn grabs the chair. He's reluctant to hit Kevin Owens. Roman Reigns gets in his face. He's like, you think this is a game? You think this is a game? He, he's yelling at this man. He's talking about how this business is his whole life. And in the, in the ring, this is his life. 
And this is what needs to be done in order to stay in the bloodline. I mean, the man is just going, on, you know, ballistic on Sami Zayn at this point. He's holding on by a thread. He's trying not to go nuts on Sami here. He turns around once or twice. He turns around facing Kevin Owens. Sami Zayn taking the chair. He struck Roman Reigns across his back and officially betrayed the bloodline. You should have seen Paul Heyman's face. That was funny as hell. I love Paul Heyman. Every time something big happens or Roman's in trouble or some, you know, big moment happens, he always has this stupid look on his face. Like he's in complete shock. And everybody just like, what happened? And of course the fans are cheering. Of course the fans are cheering because everybody wants this man to fight Roman Reigns. And you know what? He did it and there's no going back at this point. Jay Uso doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do. He started, you know, talking to Sammy Zayn. He's like, what did you just do? And he's like, and Sammy's just like, I, I can't do it. And Jimmy ain't playing this game. He super kicks Sammy Zayn right in the face. And down goes Zayn. And Jimmy's all like, you think that's your brother? No, I'm your brother. And he, and he starts beating the living hell. At a Sami Zayn. And here we go. Now it's, now it's, you know, everybody's turning to kick Sami Zayn's ass. And now Sola Sokola picks up Zayn. Someone spikes him. And here we go. And while all this is going on, Jey Uso is just standing in the, in the corner. He don't know what to do. And this is, this is incredible storytelling. Again, I find it funny how all the storylines, including, including Roman Reigns, Always say, oh, this is the best story we've had in years. and this Because the man knows. He knows how to create a great story. I'm not giving him full credit. Triple H is in it. He's in it. I'm sure Sami Zayn and other people have input. But I swear, there's a reason why Roman Reigns gets paid the big bucks. And this is why. This is why I don't find him boring. Because it's compelling storytelling. You know, one story after another from Jey Uso all the way to here. You cannot tell me this is not one of the greatest runs we've had. It's definitely the best run we've had in the decade. And I'll say that any day of the week and twice on Sunday. Jay walks out the ring. He leaves. And that's what shocked the hell out of me. He left the ring. He didn't attack Sami Zayn. I mean, this man didn't want Sami Zayn in the bloodline. But again, great storytelling. Great storytelling. He's leaving the arena. And every, I'm the one that got shocked by that the most. He stood his family up. He left. Because he has such strong feelings for Sami Zayn at this point. He saw him as a brother. He thought he was in. That was that. He, he came to his defense at the tribal court six days ago. And now he has to bear witness his friend getting destroyed, getting pummeled by the entirety of the bloodline. And he couldn't do it. He leaves. Roman Reigns is now talking down to Sami Zayn. Talking about, you broke up the family. This is your fault. I gave you the world. And then he starts hitting him with a chair. Just another heinous attack. Chair shot after chair shot after chair shot after chair shot. Then he starts punching him. Classic Roman Reigns style. Beating people up. This is what the man does. And then they leave there. And then you have that Roman Reigns chant in the crowd. All of San Antonio is going insane. F you Roman. That is what's coming out of the crowd's mouth. F you Roman. But they're actually saying the actual word. That upset me. But again, I get it. Sami Zayn is a great character, great guy. I love, you know, the whole story here. But again, in kayfabe... As I'm watching this, as a fan of the Tribal Chief and the Bloodline and all this, in my eyes, and look, I'm not discrediting the other side's argument or take on the story. I love everybody's take on the story because all of it's true. Because these are the facts. Sami Zayn did betray the Bloodline, but at the same time, the Bloodline decided to act like jackals and beat down Kevin Owens when the man was clearly defenseless. I get it. There's good, there's evil, there's gray areas, there's all this. 
but I mean, seriously, and this is the way I'm looking at it again in kayfabe in the story without the bloodline, Sami Zayn was essentially cast aside. He was an afterthought. He was, he was like one of those mid card guys that just didn't, nobody cared about. And you can blame that on the writing. You can blame that on, well, you know, I blame the writing. You can blame them on. You can blame it on the writing. You can blame it on whatever you want. The fact of the matter is, until he joined the bloodline, nobody cared about Sami Zayn. Not to this extent. But this is what Roman does. This is what the bloodline does. Roman got you invested in Jey Uso. He got you invested in Jimmy just a little bit. Although Jimmy is like the lamest one. I'm sorry to say. Solo Sokoa's debut could have been way less effective, but because of Roman, it was really effective. And now he's brought up Sami Zayn to this to this point, to this standard, this this height. He just knows how to elevate people. I've never seen somebody besides Triple H, you know, John Cena. I put him in that category as far as like lifting up talent. You know what I'm saying? Like he might keep the belts at the end of the day. But he gives a lot of character work to these guys and he and he brings them up to another level. And that's what I love about Roman Reigns. So again, your take on it is just as valid as mine. You wanna go Sami Zayn's side, you love Sami Zayn, Sami Zayn's gonna be the face, and you know, you want him to The only thing I'm not gonna accept is him beating him for the championships. Okay, that's not gonna happen. I could see him teaming up with Kevin Owens and taking out the Usos. And that's if Jay even wants to return. So, it's, I mean, this is crazy. We still have one more premium live event in the Elimination Chamber, February 18th, before we get to WrestleMania. This is like, this is what I'm talking about. This Royal Rumble needed to deliver, and it did, on every level. The Men's Royal Rumble was good. The Women's Royal Rumble was good. The pitch black match with Bray Wyatt, excellent. This match and the storytelling and the events that occurred after the match, phenomenal. This totally, I'm, 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 I'm very satisfied. I didn't like 2021 Royal Rumble all that much. I didn't like Edge winning the whole thing. I've never been that big of a fan of Bianca Belair. Again, but it is what it is. We got great matches at WrestleMania out of that. But the Royal Rumble event in 2021, it was all right. Last year, trash. Okay? Roman Reigns should have beaten Seth Rollins clean. It should have been a better finish. Ro the Women's Royal Rumble was trash. Men's Royal Rumble, trash. I don't need to go down the line. This time around, they've got it down to a T. To a T. I can't, I can't wait to see what happens tomorrow on Monday Night Raw. This is a great time to be a wrestling fan. And if you don't think so, something's wrong with you. That's all I gotta say. Something is wrong with you. I mean, and I'm going to WrestleMania. Night two, anyways. I can't wait. I mean, this is like, I've said this in a past video. I think we're in the best era of wrestling since the Ruthless Aggression era ended. That is what I genuinely believe. That is what I think. You can disagree or you can agree. But that's how I feel about it. This is this is a time right now. This is the time. This is what I'm talking about. This is great storytelling. Holy smoke. I mean, I really don't know what to make of all of this. I mean, at the end of the day, I know how I feel about it. I'm going for Reigns. Win, lose, or draw. I know this head of, ta head of the table, Tribal Chief bloodline character is gonna have to end at one point or another but i'm gonna i'm gonna write it out with him until it ends i love roman reigns i love this character this character's done a lot for me personally so do what you will with it but you gotta admit every storyline that he's been involved with in the past two and a half years has not disappointed and I will continue to expect the same as long as he's champ. And then once he loses, he's going to have to come back and reinvent himself. But this is insane. Let me know what you guys think. Like, 
comment, subscribe. I'll see you guys in the next video, which will probably be on Tuesday discussing Monday Night Raw. I'll see ya. Deuces.